I didn't know you had a twin sister, Mr. Fry. Evie Fry, sir. It's a pleasure. Usually I would reciprocate the sentiment, Miss Fry, but today I'm afraid nothing will bring me pleasure. What's troubling you, sir? I am used to people challenging my ideas. In fact, I live for it, the cut and thrust of spirited debate. Lately, however, attacks against my reputation have taken a darker turn. Threats of violence against my person and against my colleagues. I do not wish anyone to be hurt because of my research. You helped me with Staric Syrup. I am in your debt. We help each other, sir. My brother and I will make sure that you can continue your work in peace. What do you know of bones? I know how much pressure it takes to shatter, snap, or splinter one. Hmm. Perhaps it would be simpler if I just explained the situation. A few days ago, a German colleague, Dr. Schwartz, sent me a telegram. He informed me he was on his way to London to deliver a very important fossil, you see. In fact, he should arrive at Charing Cross any moment now. Would you ensure no harm comes to him? I'll bring Dr. Schwartz and that fossil to you, Mr. Darwin. you and your precious cargo for our friend Mr. Darwin. Just act naturally. Right. So, how is your father? By which I mean my dear brother Frank, with whom I grew up, of course. Oh, splendid! Wonderful to hear! I'll do my best not to call attention to how remiss he was in forgetting to warn me about the delicate situation which brings me here today. Finding a needle in a haystack, this is. Like finding a needle in a haystack, this is. <laughs> How am I going to find him among all these people? Wouldn't hurt to know what the bugger looks like. Like finding a needle in a haystack, this is.
Like finding a needle in a haystack, this is. Now to take this fossil to Darwin. My heart hasn't stopped pounding. You have it? Wonderful. But where is Dr. Schwartz? Most likely dead, I'm afraid. He never left Germany. At least I managed to get the fossil back. Dear Lord, I should tell you, I was recently approached by men who sought to purchase all my research on the condition I work only for them. Obviously, I refused. Scientific knowledge cannot be bought. It belongs to everyone. Let these villains do their worst. 